Today was a quieter form of protest, a mass sit-in, it was called. Sometimes it looked more like a lie-in on this normally busy six-lane motorway. Shortly after dawn, the road was blocked to all traffic. The opposition is sending a message here. It may be locked out of political power in this country, but it can claim the streets. Well, uh, we have been in the streets for about uh, 45 days in order to replace the government because uh, we have been uh, for more than 18 years uh, suffering this conflict in Venezuela. We have no food, medicine. We're done with, with this. And the only weapon that we have is to stay in the streets to claim for a change in the government. We want change in Venezuela, a real change. What is a real change? Election. New president, new governments, new mayors. That's what we're asking. So what is the opposition strategy? After six weeks of often intense marches and protests, it needs to vary how it shows discontent with the government. That it hopes will keep the momentum amongst its supporters while reminding the government and the world that this is not a country that's functioning normally. The government, meanwhile, claims that these rallies are unrepresentative. It says it's just the middle class that's protesting. Those here disagree. No, para nada. De verdad que no. No way. There are people here from all classes. And really, these days in Venezuela, there is hardly a middle class. The government has destroyed it. There's now a high class and a low class, and we are all here. After six weeks of this, no one quite knows how it might end. The government does have some clear advantages. It controls the army, the courts, and the economy. <laughs> But the opposition argues that, despite that, it does hold one vital Trump card, and that is that most Venezuelans do want change. Stephen Gibbs, CGTN, Caracas.